Okay, so hello guys. Today I'll be doing a uh, another class guide, and this time I'll be working on Havencraft. So Havencraft has two sub. I I guess to say two uh, two ways it functions. The first is in amulets, countdown amulets, and the second is in healing. Previously, I tried to do um, I tried to separate these two guides: the guides about amulets and the guide about healing, but they didn't, the deck didn't seem to work out very well because each deck just lacked too much power so in the end I just decided to combine both of them together and cover it under one video right now so uh, Havencraft firstly focuses on uh, amulets uh, which basically uh, their speciality is in having countdown amulets which uh, when the countdown is over it does something or summons something so for example you have your cards like Beast Call Aria uh, it's a 2 cost so you play it on turn 2 usually, and then it has countdown 3. So 3 turns later, when the countdown reaches to 0, uh, last words, you summon a Holy Falcon and a Holy Flame Tiger. Uh, the Holy Falcon is just a 2-1, which has Storm, so it can attack immediately, or the Holy Flame Tiger is just a 4-4. So basically, this is what Havencraft specializes in. It has these amulets, and it has ways of speeding these amulets up, or... Well, yeah, so their effects activate faster. Um, the other aspect of Havencraft is healing. It's one of the few classes that can heal itself a lot uh, using cards like... Um, I think Rabbit Healer is one of them. Uh, it just restores two defense to an ally. Ally can refer to your hero or you can refer to any other follower you control. You have cards like Monostatic Holy Water. It restores two defense to an ally and you simply draw a card. So. Um, with these two, uh, with the healing, there is a very certain, uh, very specific amulet that you combo it together with. It's right here, Ilana pra Ilana's Prayer. Basically, what happens is, uh, when you set this amulet down, this is not a countdown amulet, it's just an amulet that remains in play. So when you set it down, uh, whenever your leader's defense is restored, give plus one plus one to all allied followers. So. It doesn't sound that broken, but it actually is very broken. It's a very strong effect. Um, it's hard to see it right now, so I guess I'll just play a game with my deck and just show you. I'll be using this deck. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, here. Ilana Prayer. I just named it after the card, really. So basically what this deck consists of is three sacred, sacred please. Um, this is just a... Uh, one mana amulet, countdown three, draw two cards. It's a good uh, card draw amulet that you usually play on turn one. Hopefully, you, it consists of things like Beast Call Aria. This is a very um, tempo efficient uh, amulet because it's only two uh, play points. It only two costs, so uh, you can play it on turn two and just don't uh, leave it for three turns. Uh, you can just leave it for three turns. Wait for its effect to activate. And after it activates, you can immediately combo it with um, Ilana Prey and start healing yourself to buff all your followers. You have the biggest temple swing, Priestess of Akutka. And uh, one other very important card in uh, Havencraft is Thermis Decree. So its effect is three words, destroy all followers. And that's basically what it does. Um, why this works well in Havencraft is simply because Havencraft relies on amulets. So these amulets will not get affected by the Thermis' decree. So if your bot only has amulets while your opponent's bot is full of followers, you simply destroy your opponent's bot and your bot remains intact. So yeah, this deck is mainly comprised of minions that heal yourself, uh, some small removal like Blackened Scripture, um, Priestess of the Kutkia, and uh, healing cards and amulets. So I run one copy of Odin here. Odin basically he banishes an enemy follower or an amulet. The reason why I just tag one copy of him inside the deck is to remove any annoying things. Like for example, you and your opponent are both playing the same Ilana prayer deck. You can remove his amulet while if he doesn't run anything like that, he cannot remove yours. So yeah. And since Odin is quite versatile, uh, that it can play against it can be used against uh, followers as well, so I feel it's better than the execution. So, oopsie daisy. 
So I'll just play against the computer AI as usual. Just pick. I don't know. Ah, uh, this one will do. I think I can do it. There we go. So, yeah, this is my main the deck which I use to play competitive as well. So, it should be pretty good. I say it should be pretty good. Please let it be pretty good. Don't let me lose on my main deck as well. Okay. Is fighting and despair all you know? So in the starting hand, you usually one, um, one drop, a two drop, and hopefully your Ilana prayer uh, amulet. So these two definitely goes. Usually, uh, I. Uh, throw away the three drops as well because I will really want to find something good to play early game. Uh, this hand is okay because on turn one, unfortunately, we don't do anything, but turn two, uh, we can play the Beast Core Aria, turn three, Ilana's Prayer, so on and so forth. So, nothing there. I live by the sword! He plays a 2 2. Play. Beast Call Aria down. I'll put Beast Call Aria down first. The thing about uh, Havencraft's amulet mechanic is it really fights for tempo no! a lot. Because what happens is Havencraft loses a lot of early tempo since it doesn't play any uh, followers or anything. But then in the late game, if you have all your amulets, if um, all your amulets activate in a single turn, you can like wipe your opponent's board and then develop your own board uh, very quickly. So yeah, that's why. Um, the amulet, even though it appears slow, it can be very, very destructive. Uh, at turn three, I think I'll just develop one Ilana's prayer. One of the main oh, cards in um, this deck to fight for tempo, in case you lose too much tempo, is Priestess of the Kutgear. Because Priestess of the Kutgear no! basically it allows you to take down usually two minions, one from its evolve effect, the other one just by it um, attacking. So yeah. Next turn next turn this will activate, which means you summon the Holy Falcon and Holy Flame Tiger. Uh, so I don't have to worry about um, this trading into the priestess because next turn the uh, holy falcon which is a 2-1 with storm can just uh, destroy it very easily so don't mind playing priestess of the now. evolve it and banish the 2-2 two, two, two. i see awake then what and my king hopefully he doesn't evolve this now i just realized it should or that. Okay. Didn't play it around the while, but it still works out because it's only one HP. No! So, another thing about the healing aspect is you don't have to re uh, worry about losing too much health um, in the early game because since you have the healing to back you up later, you can actually just heal yourself back up. Look and in this case, instead of attacking into this, I'll simply use the Blackened Scripture to banish it to save the uh, Holy Falcon. The real battle begins. Off the Holy Flame Tiger, we get a good trade on this. This just goes first. This is why um, it's usually not very, I would just say, effective to play um, amulets in the late game because unless first they have small countdown or second they uh, have a big uh, impact on the board because you see like right now on turn 6 the computer AI just played a beastly vow to cause summon holy flame tiger really doesn't do much it just puts the amulet on the board and he still has to wait for two turns to just get a 4-4 four, four. so it's better the amulets to play in the uh, early game so here I'll put down another beast called Arya. And I'll use one more rabbit healer to heal my Look at you. face up. You're hurt. Just buff everything by one. And then uh, so you can kind of see how this is broken because if you time the Alana's prayer and the beast called Arya together Your evil and time it well, now. you can basically uh, have the beast called Arya 
develop the two minions for you and you just save the rest of your fate points for healing. Everybody. I'm surprised you didn't evolve the priestess into the girl. And I believe that is lethal. Yeah, that is. Evolve it. Even without healing, I could just Let evolve the other. Overkill by the Maybe not. Right. Okay. So that's the computer AI. Quick and simple. So hopefully, hopefully, I pray this deck doesn't lose from suffering. to another person online. Nope, skip, skip. The one that is. So that's basically generally how the deck works. You play down amulets, you get them to develop minions for you, and then use the Ilana's prayer to buff them up. And despite how it looks, this deck can actually go to the late game as well, because um, with cards like. Well, uh, it's hard to explain why, but the, your healing can help you survive the early game. Uh, for the mid game, your. It's where this deck is strongest because of Ilana pr uh, Ilana's prayer to buff up your uh, followers to a crazy amount. And in the late game, it's this deck is also quite resourceful because it summons, like, it uses cards more efficiently. Like, one amulet can produce two minions, which is, fighting in despair is all you quite know? impressive. <laughs> I guess you're looking for a fight. Mention shift. He can play his flame destroyer right here, yep. That's two. Yep, you can concede because it gets another turn because of dimension share. I have lost. <sighs> this is why I really, really hate spell room crap. Mm. Be right back. I'll be back. One day I'll find a deck to counter Sparrow Craft, and when that day comes, I will be joyous. Oh, round two, I guess. Hopefully, I don't run into more Sparrow Craft decks. Like, I feel Sparrow Craft is a deck that it's. I don't. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good deck, and. I don't really mean to hate against it, it's just that I feel it's a little too overpowered. It has literally only one weakness, which is aggro decks. And it's literally like it's weak to nothing else because if it's, it's usually can is fighting any and despair all you know, this combo, which is prepare for defeat 13 times um, for its dimension shift combo and then. After it gets its dimension ship combo off, that's GG to the opponent player. So really can't say much, but I really dislike it. <coughs> okay, so what do we have here? We're going against Blackcraft. Uh, right now I didn't draw my Ilana prayer yet, which means I have to store until I get the Ilana prayer. Which means the last one. Unless I pop that here, you know, pop decks, yeah? Currently, there are two Blackcraft archetypes, I think. One is the very long wait for vengeance and destroy your opponent. The other one is the the other one is the blood craft, the aggro aggressive blood craft with uh, forest bats. In. So. Blood pack that start that doesn't tell me anything, so I guess I'll just develop a rabbit. Look at you! You're hurt! Seeing this you probably already know it's the uh Haven Craft because no other Haven Craft deck runs rabbit healer. Stop! Aggressive. Okay, this is probably the bad thing of this part. Show you something. Give me a break. Give me a break. The, the one why Havencraft uh, can fight well against and on most aggro decks, assuming um, assuming they don't draw too badly, 
um, is because they have the healing. They can keep up with the damage, the aggro that it does by healing themselves up back to um, a, a reasonable amount. That's why it usually doesn't Sinners be purged. lose to bad. Wait, what is this guy playing? Sometimes I think he's playing the ag aggressive game and then sometimes I think, I think he's playing the late game. The heck? I guess I have to wait and see for more cards. Put down Beast Core Aria definitely, because I want to play the cards in the I think I'll put down Sacred Plea for more cards. Bad, bad, bad. I'll ignore this for now. I'll go bad, bad, bad. If he treats uh, this Righteous Devil into the Prison Priestess, I can uh, Priestess of Good Draw to clear off whatever else I can. Play. Ah, here we go. Lana's player has appeared, which means stalls for a few more turns. Your evil deed end first. now. If he's if he is the, uh, the aggressive bat, I, I really you. want to have as much bat as possible before before um, he gets his army of bats. Up. For righteous devil, um, usually it's played after. Uh, Vengeance activated. And this is a fan fan. Um, even after Vengeance get, gets activated for my opponent, he, um, I won't have to worry about this since it's a fan fan. Only when it's played, then it doesn't get uh, bane and drain. So, since it isn't played when Vengeance activated, it will never get those abilities. What in the? Stop! That's an aggressive. Oh, I've drawn all three priestesses. Wow. Um, hmm. I'll put down Radiance Angel. Lost in way with one. Bit. Draw. Okay. I'll end it here. <coughs> for Bloodcraft, especially for the Bloodcraft that's going for the long game, there is one tactic that can be used against them, which is to don't to not bring them down to. Um, below 10 HP, so you leave them like at 11, at 12, somewhere close, where you can just um, bring them down to 0 and 1 turn. Uh, that's quite viable for my current deck, because as you saw just now in the Ilana's prayer, uh, you can really buff your minions up to quite a high number. High number, high stats, but yeah, let's see what it does. Okay, Suffocating the pains of sorrow. Hate me more. Loathe me. The darkness. Okay. Uh, must should have counted my hand there, but ah, it doesn't matter. Put down Ilana's prayer. Following that, I'll put down. I'll put on one Unicorn Dancer and I'll do it because I don't want to go for the Priestess because it doesn't kill this Wow, if I do this kill, I get to kill off that Righteous you dare to fire? I'll evolve my the real battle begins. and kill off this, which is a very annoying thing that he played well and the resentment has no end. even if he clears off my bot, next time I'm going to drop Lucifer as a big minion Lucifer works pretty okay in this deck because reason being one, uh, it's a very big minion. Uh, if you calculate it normally without any buffs in uh, its evolved form, it can deal 13 damage in one turn. So my opponent is at 16 with three more buffs from Milana's prayer. 16 is not a difficult number to hit. So. The question is, do I want to play Lucifer now? <coughs> I guess that won't be a problem. Let's see how May it all life prosper and be blessed. So, Glory. Yeah, so first skill, I get to buff him once. So I need to buff him three times to get 16. Next turn, I can probably, if he doesn't clear it, I can heal with the monostatic holy water and the healing angel to give him, to get him to 9, 10. 
them then I have to evolve into I don't know something and then I will equip this for 13 plus his skill up. Uh, my numbers in my head right now maths my maths is not that <laughs> oh so Hand over your Ow. soul. That kind of you will soon learn. Is he going your to life force is succulent. Oh wow. This fate is unjust. He did well. He did well to pull off that combo, but unfortunately, or at least fortunately for me, I'm playing the deck that heals myself up. At this, at this point, I should go for a wider board probably. I'll put on Prism, and then after I'm through with this, and then I'll find out here. Ah, never mind. We just go with the game. He's pitiful now! Kill me at 17, buff it once, and I'll see you all good. Let us conclude. Let us know it's scary for Black Dog to boss. Merciless, open Even your eyes! Even though it's not really common, it's not a bad boss. They can use the bloody uh, Mary mechanic to just do so much damage to their face, which using Bloody Mary's skill is reflected to the opponent's face. So, they can basically attempt to kill you by killing themselves. The Lord wills it. You must be desperate using Revelation to clear off my page. Which tells me I can go on. Let me show you something. I think I'll get sacred. Oh yes, please go up. They don't. Let me use your pen. I don't mind using one water, holy water, just because I have another one. And it draws more cards. How many revelations has he used? I think he's used two. If I remember correctly, it's me, Benya. This looks like a deck which just put all the cards he has together without like any consideration for a proper art. Go block it! Go block it! Okay. <laughs> and with aggressive blo uh, bats in there, followed by like late game bloody mermaids. Interesting. So it's just gonna end, huh? In that case, is there any possible way which I deliver lethal to it? Uh, I have eight right now. Yes, four, which means I need six. Six, which means I need to have three buffs. One. No, I definitely do not have enough. What am I even thinking? I'll put down. The Night Maiden to put Do not even fathom touching. And I'll put down the Holy Wall. Buffs everything once more. Bad, bad, bad. I'll trade. By the light. You just think you beat me. Bad, bad, bad. The reason I don't attack face is because if I get him to nine, it gets him in the vengeance range. And everything in his hand will probably be vengeance, 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 vengeance. So hopefully, stop. I think no. Because stop. I just now, what's it called? Uh, revelation. Like now, um, basically it use eight damage to all followers, it's but vengeance they cost four less. So. What this means is if it's if vengeance is activated you can take the fourth or bot clear and you still have six mana left to develop it. So I do not want to give him that opportunity. So just leave him with a uh, high enough HP. Uh he used his third revelation, so all of that's gone. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And I'll clear off Vania because she's scary. Put down the prison priestess. Let me show you something. Sacred. I'll put down Priest Your evil deeds just end for, now. Um, temple, I guess, just to play a little. And I won't play Sacred Feet. The reason is because next time I want as much space for Minion to heal. Normally, if you have enough space, I can find things Sacred Feet, but right now I 
show me a few followers. This call I'm gonna get me two more followers, which means I call two. And if my opponent doesn't clear any minion off, and uh, if I had played secretly, and my uh, my bot would be doing now, and if my opponent doesn't clear off anything, uh, the Thai guy, the Holy Flame Thai guy, will fail to generate. So I mean, don't want that. He just plays secretly. I seem to have lost. I yep, pray that you will be freed from suffering. Healing plus amulet runecraft combined, also known as Ilana Prayer. I guess in this deck, the, the more powerful aspect is Ilana's Prayer because it does buff up all your followers by a lot. So, yeah. That's it for the video, I guess. It didn't go as badly as the, the Earth Right one. I promise you guys, I genuinely, I genuinely do play Earth Right, Runecraft. Just that, that time I was unlucky. Okay. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like, uh, subscribe if you want to, and uh, leave in the comments what you want me to do next. And well, see you next time. Bye bye.